morning or good afternoon. Sorry, there are flies assaulting me today. It is Monday, March 23rd. And uh, uh, I am outside in uh, the garden today. <clears throat> so I'm glad that you are able to join me. I see a few people here, Octavia, Becky, Dan, Mary, Barbara Poole, Deb, Karen, Simone from the Netherlands, Luz from uh, Ma uh, Maryland, Marlene, Linda, lots of you. Thank you so much for joining me here for another drawing party. Um, I have had an interesting weekend because on Saturday we had the first ever sketchbook school um, well, live workshop, our fountain pen workshop. And it was, it's something that I've been thinking about for a year and it finally happened. And I was saying to Kosha in the, mo in the minutes leading up to it that this feels like when I was in 10th grade or 11th grade and I was in a high school play and the curtain was about to go up and we were all kind of standing backstage ready to go on and you get those butterflies in your stomach and I just haven't had those kind of jitters in a long time but uh, it was it was fantastic it was really 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 nice really fun we had a, um, a lot of people there and they had a great time and we worked with our fountain pens and we did a bunch of drawing and so it was really nice and, and actually um, just to get one mini piece of advertising out of the way. Um, we, at the end of the workshop, we launched the next workshop. And um, it is uh, a gouache portrait workshop. So we're going to learn to paint portraits in gouache from Jennifer Orkin Lewis, who is also known as August Wren. Perhaps you've heard of her or seen her work or follow her on Instagram. She has something like a quarter of a million people who follow her when she does her painting a day. Every day she does a gouache painting. So as you can imagine, she's fantastic at it at this point. Um, and so she is going to be leading us in this workshop, which is going to be on April 4th. So just a couple of weeks away, we announced it and it's about half full, sold out already. Um, we're also giving a, a discount. Um, and there's a special code because we just want to make we want people to have fun doing this, and so let me just write down what the uh, what the code is if you are interested in joining us. This is the code here: Gouache 15. And if you do that, you get a 15% discount. So think about it. If you have nothing to do, if you're around in a couple of weeks why not join us and learn what we're going to be doing. What's really fun about this workshop is we're going to be taking old family photographs, black and white photographs, and using them as the basis for painting gouache portraits. And Now, if you're the kind of person who uh, has some hesitation about painting portraits, this is not about getting perfect likenesses. That's not the issue. It's really about having fun with gouache, uh, you know, as you can see from these little pictures here, um, where are they? Whoops, they're over here. How does one even do this? There you go. Um, as you can see, you know, she's not a photorealistic painter. She's painting impressions, and uh, that's what makes it so much fun. So anyway, enough of that. If you'd like to join us, just go to sketchbookschool.com, and you can sign up for it now. Do it soon, because it's going to sell out, and then you won't be able to join us. So. So what I wanted to talk about, um, yes, 72 spots left, Shelley points out. So yeah, it's, it's, it's filling up. It's filling up and it's going to be really fun. So <clears throat> what I wanted to um, talk about today is something kind of different. Something that I think is really important to me. It's at the, it's at the heart of what Sketchbook School has been about, or really what my art making has been about for a long time. And that's about the importance of recording your experience in your sketchbook. Not just doing drawings of random things, 
not just learning to draw, although again, that's important, but using the art that you make as a way of being present in the moment. And, you know, I think that I began to draw when I was going through a life-changing trauma. Kind of like what we're going through now today, frankly. And that trauma um, was gave me the feeling that I had no control over my life. Gave me the feeling that my life had suddenly changed and that it was never going to be the same again and that it was never going to be livable in a certain way. That I wouldn't be able, not only me, of course, in fact, less me than my wife, Patty, um, but also my son, Jack, who was just a baby at the time, all three of us and all the people in our family, we just felt like everything had changed and we didn't know what to do. Um, and I found my way to drawing as a way of appreciating how much wonder and beauty there was still in my, our lives. That despite the unknown, despite the darkness that seemed to be the future, there was still a lot of light around me. And there was still a lot of beauty. There was still a lot of things that I should be grateful for. And by focusing on them and drawing them and writing about them in my sketchbook, I turned my sketchbook into a really powerful therapeutic tool. So my goal was not to make beautiful drawings. My goal was not to make realistic drawings. I didn't care so much about that. I wanted to use my drawing as a way of being, as a way of, of having um, an anchor and a foundation in the world. Uh, this is a drawing I did this weekend when I was thinking about that again. I was thinking about the, the kind of meditative feeling that drawing can give me, you know, and, and how, <clears throat> how difficult it is for me in general to meditate. I find that my mind wanders like, um, like a stray dog. But when I moor it in some way, like if I moor it into um, uh, drawing or into uh, a guided meditation, then I'm able to focus and to be here now. So you might hear some talking in the background. That's my, my brother-in-law. We're all working out here in the garden because we're all st still at work and we're all in this kind of weird commune of workers. So if you hear him, that's Rick and he's working on his planetarium, which is his job. So anyway, so anyway, um, what I wanted to do today is I want to go further into that and I want to talk about some of the moments that we are having now and how we can use these moments, how we can search for these more beautiful moments. And one of the things that's also inspiring to me is this book. It's called The Book of Delights, as you can see, by Ross Gay. Ross Gay is, um, he is a National Book Award finalist poet. He's an amazingly beautiful poet. And this book of essays is um, his attempt every day to find something delightful in his day. And that could sound sort of treacly and namby-pamby, but it isn't actually. It's a lot of the delights that he finds are edgy, shocking, true, authentic. But every day he sits down and writes an essay, a page and a half or so, and um, this book is just a reminder of how many wonders we have in our lives every day. And, um, you know, I would say, get this book, first of all. It's a fantastic book. Get it on your Kindle. Carry it around with you when you're having one of those moments crack it open and read one of his essays because they're just spectacular. But, but they made me, you know, think yet again about this quest for delight and what can we do to say, okay, 
there's a lot we don't know about the world. We don't know about the future. But what can we know about the present? Um, what can we see around us that um, drawing can make clear? Because so often our minds are... Um, I'm see, I see that a lot of you are reading this book, which is fantastic here. Bo says, that's the book I'm reading every night before bed. Well, that's fantastic. Um, Teresa, um, whoops, that's not Teresa, but hi, Carolyn. Um, Teresa also says that she loves Ross Gay. So, yeah, so, you know, can, what can you do to get out of the virtual reality that your imagination is creating, that your fears and stress and anxiety are creating. They're telling you this is what is going to happen. This is what it's going to be like. And what can you say instead about what is actual in your life right now? The sunshine on my face. Uh, the sound of the dove cooing overhead. These little things that we can focus on um, are the actual, the only truths that we're encountering. Everything else is hy hypothesis. If you read the newspaper, there is an infinite number of um, scenarios that people are theorizing about. But you know, we don't know what's what any of them is going to be. But we do know about about this true reality. So I've been trying to focus on that. Let me show you um, something. This is this is a two little videos that Jack, my son, sent me a couple days ago. He's in Los Angeles with his girlfriend and his dog, Penny, and they were just trying out their new air fryer. He made these two videos and they just, they made me laugh harder than I've laughed in a long time. And I thought you might enjoy them too. So let me just play one for you. There's going to be two in a sequence. Penny. And this is the follow-up. I mean, I've got to play that again. <laughs> I just love that. Um, it's, I just want to play them Penny. one more time so you can... Here's Penny. She's such a good little beggar. So those are the moments that we should be looking for, that we should be sharing, that we should be recording. And we should be using our, our sketchbooks as the place where we put down those thoughts. Because what I found in the years of doing this is that when things seem particularly difficult and my life seems particularly array, that looking back, at that book full of these moments, just like Ross Gay's Book of Delights. Looking back at those moments resets me and says, you know what? That voice in your head is wrong and this book is right. You know? So <clears throat> I wanted to share with you today a, um, a lesson from a sketchbook school class as I'm trying to do every day. I want to share these different lessons with you. Just give you a sense, but give those of you who have never taken a class of sketch before, like what are they like, what are classes like, this will give you a sense of that. But also, this is my, um, uh, this is from a class where I was talking about the importance of comics, comic books, and comic art, and cartooning to me, and how it had affected my, my art making. And so um, I made this lesson, which is about how to make a comic of one day in your life and how this can become a way of journaling. The comic making can be a way of journaling because it's simple, it's fast, and you can do it incrementally over the day. Okay, so I'm going to show you a video. It's about seven minutes long. And then um, we'll come back and we'll make something ourselves. But in the meantime, if you want to be working on something while you're, while you're watching or listening, 
think about a delight that happened to you yesterday or even this morning. What is a thing that you could, could pull out and commemorate in your sketchbook? We go. So this exercise is a little bit like Instagram or Twitter or checking in on Facebook. They're little tiny random moments, a record of them that make up your day. And then you'll be able to sit down at the end of your day and say, oh, this is what I did today. And if you did this multiple days in the week, you could say, this is what I did in this week. This is what I did in this month. This is what I did in this year. This is my life. Here it is recorded in this epic comic book made of little tiny moments. Now, ideally, we would record these moments as they were happening. That may or may not be possible. What you might want to do instead is say, OK, every few hours, I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to quickly draw a little representation of each of the moments that I did in the last few hours. And then, you know, at lunchtime, you might record what you did in the late morning and then you know you take a break at the end of your work day perhaps and record what you did in the afternoon and then all the way to bed these are not complicated drawings they're very simple and they're records really that might mean something to you somebody else might look at them and say well, what is that and but you know when you look at it that that's what that drawing signifies what really matters is the breadth of them the collection of all these different moments. That's the essential part of it, is not any given drawing, but the collection, the whole series, the scenes that made up the entire movie that was your day. So I don't want you to spend more than a minute or two doing any one of these drawings. It's really not practical after all either, because you want to fit them into your schedule as you go through the day. But we're just gonna do them quickly. And a lot of the things that we're gonna do drawings of are frankly pretty mundane, but that's part of the idea. We'll do the drawings, and then we'll come back and we'll add some color to just tie the whole thing together. So again, what we want to do is capture all the moments of your day in a small series of small panels that make up a comic book. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ah, that was fun, wasn't it? Yes, so. Are there enough interesting things happening in your day to fill a comic book? Well, as you can see, none of those things are terribly exciting. Most of them we do every day. Well, maybe not shopping at the grocery store, but um, there's, you know, there's, there's uh, it's just a reminder to me of all the cool subject matter that fills our life every day. That seems mundane, that's easy to overlook. Um, and yet, you know, once you draw it, once you think about it, once you memorialize it, commemorate it, um, this is a great opportunity for art making and sketchbook filling. This was what I drew yesterday. This is taking uh, my in brother and sister-in-law's dog's dog for a walk. She is um, a young Australian sheepdog and has lots of energy, lots of energy. And so she's a challenge to walk, but uh, it's really, to me, one of the highlights of my day, honestly, is going for a 45 minute walk with her because she has so much energy. And like putting on a, a book on tape in my on my phone and listening to audible or something like that or an, a podcast and just walking around the neighborhood um you know and this was my moment this is a moment i will look back on is, is one of the, the delights is walking the dog so so yeah so um let's think about what we want to do today i think i'm going to draw with my ipad today let me just uh get that going it's a bit dusty um Get it a bit bigger. Yeah, so I'm going to. Here's what I'm going to draw today. Actually, let me, let me close this for a second. Because what I want, you know, um, what I was thinking of drawing today was this. So, this the neighborhood that we're in now here in Phoenix is was originally a citrus grove. So everybody has these ancient orange, lemon, and grapefruit trees on their property. And um, what happens is people get so much fruit, and they don't know what to do with it. So they fill bags or boxes, and they just put them by the curb um, by, their, by their front lawn and just invite neighbors to grab some. Most people have their own source, so they're not necessarily taking them right away. But I think they're beautiful, and I think it's a really cool thing. So. That's what I was thinking is yesterday we picked up some of those. And uh, there we go. That's that's one of these beautiful lemons. So I think that's what I'm gonna draw today. I'm just gonna draw that lemon as a reminder of, of the lemon. Oh, maybe tomorrow I should draw this stupid fly that keeps harassing harassing me. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna work on that. So why don't you think about what you're gonna work on? And uh, Try it out. So, something is sort of a fairly ordinary shape, really, but. We're going to jazz it up and get into the textures of it and so forth. Let's see if we can't make it a bit more exciting. Um, I'm working with this new feature, Procreate 5, which um, allows you, for those of you who are interested in Procreate and drawing on the iPad, allows you to create triads so for instance if you go to here you see how it, it is it is determined what the three colors are that work together which is sort of interesting i'm experimenting with it i don't want to be um, but it, you can pick any color and it will tell you what the other what the corresponding triadic colors are so across the the color wheel for those of you interested in color theory and interested in the ipad it's kind of a cool thing to play with but um i don't know it just gives a certain look unnatural and super fluorescent in this case, but um, it's kind of good about that.
You know, again, this drawing doesn't have to be an elaborate one. I mean, you can knock out a drawing like this and, um, you know, just decide that you want to just capture the moment, capture the feeling, the thought. You don't necessarily have to do, um, you know, something that's that's uh, extremely detailed or um, by the way if you're interested in learning more about the iPad I did this I made this class recently it's called be it's called be an iPad artist and uh, it's kind of everything I learned over the last couple of years of working with the iPad. I just, I just think the iPad is great. And the reason I love it so much really is because of the colors. You know, I'm going to switch to, if you hold on one second, that's, one, yeah, that's better. So you can see the iPad rather than just hearing me, seeing me. I'm not that interesting. This is one there, there we go. Now it's seeing something juicier and I'll, oh, no, that's not what I want. One second and I will be there in minutia in the middle. So, let's see now. I'd like to add some more details to this lemon. Increase the kind of speckliness. Let's see what it does. some texture to this lemon. These lemons are, have very thick skin and uh, they're really pretty meaty. So I'm going to kind of capture that aspect of it. I think if I was doing this in my analog sketchbook, I would probably um, be writing notes and thoughts as I did this. And I would be recording my thoughts. Like, what do I think about this lemon? Or what do I think about the idea of people being kind of generous with this thing? You know, it's like here they are, they're sharing, they're sharing the stuff that they've grown. You know, and how nice of a thing that is. And how in some ways it, a relatively easy thing it is to do, right? I mean, you're, you are getting this bounty um, from the earth, the tree is producing them, but you know, you don't have to hoard. Maybe that's a particularly relevant kind of thought to have on these days, you know, the, the, the power of generosity, and in this case, it's sort of anonymous generosity, people are just putting it out there, they have no idea who takes them, maybe they peer out the window to see who actually grabbed something, but you know, it's, um, Maybe there's something, I don't know, so maybe I will write something here, uh, just as a reminder that uh, this is a special thing, I'm going to write something here. Um, All right, so there's my lesson, my uh, my thought for today. That's the lesson that that this experience taught me. Let me get rid of this. Um, so think about that. Think about it if you want. Try 
looking around at what's going on with you. You know, I think journaling is extremely valuable. Um, a way of getting insight into yourself. And I found, though, that purely written journals made it, I don't know, I just, I didn't feel the same sense of joy that I would feel from an illustrated journal. I didn't feel that same um, sense of finding beauty. A lot of times I would feel like my, my intellectual brain, my, my rational brain, my inner critic, they were seizing the pen with the keyboard and really taking over and saying, here's what we're going to put down. But somehow when you, um, when you draw, maybe a gentler, more beautiful part of your mind takes over. I don't know. It just feels like it's a way of tapping into um, a softer, more appreciative perspective. I don't know why exactly that is, but that's been my experience. So I found that my written journals could be harsher, bleaker, more um, kind of tangled. But my written journals had clarity to them. I mean, my illustrated journals have clarity to them and beauty, and they're more inspiring to me to look back on. Try it. But I think in either case, a bit of self-contemplation is good. And uh, certainly habit is habit is always good. Habit is the way that you make progress. And so having a thing like this where you say to yourself every day, I'm going to pick at least one thing to be grateful for. One thing that is a delight in my life. So, um, yeah. So, I, again, I would recommend this book, The Book of Delights by Ross Gay. You can get it anywhere. Um, and I would also say... Hopefully um, you are finding some help in this daily meeting that we're having. We're going to, I think tomorrow, we are going to have another friend join us. So it'll be not just, you won't just have to look at my mug, but we'll have uh, my friend Sally Swindell in Cleveland is going to be joining us. She's a very effervescent person and uh, we will be drawing together then. So, so join me. Um, oh, and by the way, if you... Do make some art today that you would like to share. Please put this hashtag on it so we can find it. Hashtag SBS Drawing Party. And that way we can see it, we can share it. Or if you're a member of the schoolyard, please share it there. Um, and also, if you if you found a bit of a struggle to, um, to find your way here today, I would urge you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the little bell. If you do that, you will get a notification as soon as we could get start. And I generally start five minutes early with a little countdown so you have time to, to come here. But again, it's always going to be noon Eastern time, also on Facebook. So if you go to the Sketchbooks full news page, you'll find us there too. Okay, well, thanks so much for being with me today. And um, I will see you again tomorrow. And in the meantime, delight yourself and uh, see what comes of it.